friends and welcome back. Today we're going to continue on talking about the incorruptible seed. In looking at this, we've been looking at that seed. And one thing we'll see as we're moving on is that Jesus was the Word made flesh. He is the incorruptible seed. When you spend time meditating upon the Word, you're meditating upon Jesus. In the last program, we started talking about the fact that God has written out a love story with you as the central character. He wrote out this love story, and the plot began to be developed even before the creation of the world. It's, the Bible tells us that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I can just picture, as we're looking at this, and as we're thinking about this, as we're moving forward, I can just picture this meeting being held in heaven. God was sitting down at the table with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They're sitting there discussing creation. God's describing his vision. The Father's describing his vision of creation, the provision for his man, Adam and Eve. Describing all of the things he was going to provide them, the garden he was going to create for them, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything designed, you know, for their every need to be satisfied through all eternity. But then in the middle of his discourses, he's developing the plot of his ultimate love story. He looks over at Jesus, he looks over at the Holy Spirit and pauses. I can just picture him looking at them with such sadness in his eyes, tears probably running down his eyes. This man and this woman that I will create will turn their backs on me. They will turn their backs on us and they will commit treason. But I want to give them that choice because I desire for them to choose to be in relationship rather than to be forced in relationship. We must develop a plan for them to be brought back to us because we are, we, they are being created for relationship. And as the Father pauses, I can just see Jesus piping up. Father, I will go and be their lamb. I will be the spotless lamb and I will give my life for your man and woman to be restored to relationship with us. I will go to that cross. And I can hear the Holy Spirit as Jesus finishes piping up and saying, Jesus, I will go with you. I'll anoint you. I'll empower you. I'll strengthen you as you face that sacrifice. And I can see them finalizing this plan. And once the plan is finalized, of your and my redemption, the plan is finalized for Jesus to become the incorruptible seed that would to be planted on Calvary's hill. God stood up from that table. And we read what happened next in Genesis chapter 1 when he says, Light be. Because Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We've seen in the previous couple of programs that there are a number of blessings which God hath provided to us in the eternal redemption that Jesus has obtained for us. And one of those is the fact that he chose us before the foundation of the world. I can see the three of them sitting around that table in heaven preparing that plan. And in Psalms 139, it talks about that he knew us before we were even our mother's womb. He chose us. He wrote out a plan and put it into his book. And as I said in the previous program, 
That book contains the greatest love story of all time. The love story of God and his man or woman. He desires for all of us to choose this relationship for which he paid the ultimate sacrifice of his only begotten son, as we see in John chapter 3 and verse 16. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for you and I to be brought into relationship. Will we choose to accept it? I think one of the greatest tragedies in this love story is the fact that there are chapters written for people who will never choose to enter into relationship, never choose to accept that price that he paid for them, and they will depart this earth without knowing him. They will depart this earth never accomplishing the things or experiencing the goodness he planned for them. There are also people whose lives are being cut short before they're even born. You know, we talk about abortion, and in the U.S., over 60 million babies have been aborted. Each one of those children had a chapter in God's book that will never be accomplished. They each had a plan. As we move forward and look at this, you know, the incorruptible seed is the word of God. Jesus is that incorruptible seed that was planted on Calvary's hill. And from that seed, he gave birth to the church. It is all about relationship. We see in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 23, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So we've been looking at this incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. We've been looking at sowing this, and we're going to go you know, deeper in looking at this. But in the previous couple of programs, we've started looking in Ephesians chapter 1 at the benefits we have in him. The benefits that have been provided to us in that incorruptible seed. Let's go back into Ephesians 1, pick up with the next benefit. It says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we're, what we're looking at is the fact that he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ. Christ is that incorruptible seed. So we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in that incorruptible seed. In 2 Peter chapter 1, and verse 3, it says, According as he has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge. What is that knowledge? That knowledge is gained through the incorruptible seed of God's word. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the incorruptible seed. We saw the first benefit we saw in verse 4 was the fact that you and I were chosen to serve God before the foundation of the world. Then we saw in verse 5 that he predestined us to be adopted into his family as children. We saw in verse 6 that God has made us acceptable to himself through the blood of Jesus. Now let's go into verse 7 to look at the next benefit. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So the next benefits that we see here, we see two benefits in this verse. First of all, in him we have redemption through his blood. We have redemption. We have been purchased back by the blood of Jesus. You see, Adam and Eve committed the ultimate sin. They committed treason and turned their back on God. They sold out to the devil. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 talks about that Satan is the God, little g, of this world. We became servants, slaves of Satan as a result of their sin. Jesus through his blood, purchased us back to, to, from Satan. That is what redemption is all about. We may spend some time moving forward looking at this. He redeemed us 
through his blood. I've heard it once said, you can tell the value of something by the price a person is willing to pay for it. You see people paying ridiculous prices for things. You know, I think about old cars. I've heard of old cars, you know, like different ones that are limited editions and things like that. People paying, you know, $100,000, $200,000 for it. And you look at it and you think, well, it's just a vehicle. Why? Because in their mind, that is their perceived value. And so that's what they will pay is their perceived value. How do you value a human life? God perceived your value to be his son. He perceived my value, your value, to be the blood of his son. So the price he paid to redeem us, to purchase us back from Satan, to purchase us out, out of our sin, was the blood of Jesus. We run around sometimes like the proverbial chicken with its head cut off, running around here or there, trying to do everything we can to gain God's favor, God's pleasure. But he already bought us. He already paid that price that he was willing to pay for us. In John 3, 16, it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. The value he placed on you, the value he placed on me, was the blood of Jesus. And that was the price that he was willing to pay. And there is no higher price in this universe that anyone could ever pay for anything than the blood of Jesus. We do not have revelation. We do not have concept of the value of that blood. But it is through that blood we have been redeemed. So when we talk about he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, one of those blessings is the fact that he valued us enough to pay the price of his first begotten son, Jesus' blood, to obtain us back into relationship with him. That is just amazing to think about. That's almost, it's hard for your mind to even begin to think about the love that would be behind such, you know, this words almost seem to escape me. The love that was behind his motivation, his desire to redeem us. As I said at the beginning of the program, I could just picture them sitting around the table in heaven, putting together this plan. to send Jesus to that cross as the incorruptible seed to purchase us back, to redeem us before we even had the chance. I used to work in the street mission, and people will take you back to their past and their, you know, I've done this. How could God ever accept me? Because this and this and this. We saw a couple of programs ago in, in Romans chapter 8, to be carnally minded is death. By looking at, at your past, by allowing the enemy to remind you of all the things you have done. He is robbing you of that relationship. Because it doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what sins you might have committed. He paid the price of Jesus' blood before you ever had the chance to do any of those things. He loved you so much. He foresaw that you were going to do those things. We can do nothing to change God's value for us. His value that he placed upon our lives was the blood of Jesus. The second benefit we see in this verse was the forgiveness of sins. Notice it says, according to the riches of his grace. It is through the price that he paid with Jesus' blood, he, had, he bought us back and forgave us all our sins. I shared in a previous program about the gentleman from the street mission who came to me and, and went through his whole past and talked about it. He didn't believe God could ever forgive him. And my response to him, which kind of shocked me because it came from my spirit, was God cannot forgive you because 
according to Ephesians chapter 1, he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, and one of those blessings is the forgiveness of sins. He has forgiven you. Can you accept his forgiveness? He hath accepted you. But if you are carnally minded, if you are looking outward, if your focus is on the input of your five physical senses, if your focus is on, you know, the things you've done, and that's the thing is, Satan wants us to focus on self, to focus on self-effort. God just wants us to focus on his grace. These things were provided for us before we ever had a chance to commit sin. These things were provided for us because God knew we would not have a chance to do these, to, to make it on our own. If you go back and look in Psalm 78, In Psalm 78, it says for, you know, it's going through, as you're looking through Psalm 78, it's, it goes through talking about Israel's relationship with God. It talks about his judgments for their sins. They live before Jesus. But there's a verse in here in the midst of this discourse that always sticks out to me that I think is very important to us. Because people say, well, how could God ever forgive me? Well, you're not looking at things correctly. God forgave you because of the blood of Jesus. How could God ever forgive you? Because he valued you so much that he paid the price in blood for you. And see, he knows we're not always going to get it right. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows we're going to fall. We're going to trip. And what Satan wants to do is he wants to keep us focused on our mistakes. Here in Psalms chapter 78, it says in verse 38, or actually, let's back up. In verse 36, it says, Nevertheless, talking about Israel, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied with, unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Their heart was not right with him. They were not steadfast in his covenant. They were not turning to him. They were not looking at his word. They were not turning, you know, listening to him. They were not following him. But notice in verse 38, But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turning his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and cometh not again. He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and cometh not again. That was before Jesus went to the cross. He remembered that they were but flesh and blood. Today, Jesus has gone to that cross. Today, Jesus has paid that price in his blood. Today, Jesus has become that incorruptible seed planted on Calvary's hill when he died upon that cross. That incorruptible seed descended into hell and suffered the torments of hell so that you could rise with him from the ashes of sin from the depths of darkness. In Christ alone, we do rise up. Walking in freedom, washed white as snow, for he has washed us by his word, his word made flesh. It is through Jesus we find ourselves accepted and purchased by our creator. We choose now to become his bond slaves, servants of love, entering into relationship with the one who has accepted us, walking in the fullness of his grace, we will see him lead us to our place. He has a race. He has chosen us. And within his grace, we step out and we run, knowing when we fall, he will pick us up, for he has made us accepted and adopted us as his own. The enemy cannot change this. He cannot take us away from the one who has sealed us with himself through his blood. So let's look at the next benefit. In verse 8, wherein he hath bounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. He has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. You see, how is this a benefit? We all run into situations where we don't know what to do. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll go back there and look at it real quick. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you have your Bible, in verse 6, 15, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You see, what Paul's telling us is he's abounded to us. He's excelled. He's poured out his wisdom. He's poured out his prudence, his knowledge. God has given us the mind of Christ within our spirit. The answer to any problem, that is one of our spiritual blessings. The Holy Spirit enables us through our prayer language to pray out mysteries it talks about in 1 Corinthians 14, to pray out this wisdom that he has abounded to us. He has abounded towards us. He has given us all of his wisdom. He has placed the mind of Christ within our spirit. And he gives us the ability through our spiritual language to pray out those mysteries as we talk about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we'll look at this more in future programs. But he did not leave us here clueless trying to figure things out. He has placed the answer to every situation. And the interesting thing about this is, is God does not operate within time as we operate within time. He saw ahead to every need we'd have. He heard every question we would ever ask before the moment of our birth. He provided the answer to each one. He abounded in all wisdom by giving us the answer to every situation, to every problem, to every question we will ever ask. And he deposited those answers into our spirit. And then he gave us his spirit and it is the Holy Spirit then who gives us utterance and enables us to pray out the mysteries of the things we do not know. And those answers he's deposited in our spirit, we ha can draw them out with our tongue. We will talk about that more in future programs, but just for now, for the study today, he's answered every single question you will ever ask. And the answer is in your spirit. And if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, as I've said before, it's just a matter of inviting him into your heart. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I invite you into my heart. I receive your eternal redemption. I receive the forgiveness of sins purchased with your blood. And I just confess with my now, mouth now that you are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a simple prayer like that. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. And if you just prayed that for the first time, please send us an email to prayer at mbmediaministries.net. Again, that's prayer at mbmediaministries.net. So he's abounded towards us in all wisdom. And then go to verse 9. We'll see the next benefit. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. I hear people struggle with this all the time. And I just want to remind you, our first book that we put out, Fundamental Keys to Unlock the Plan of God. It's available in Amazon, but our goal in, in publishing that book was to give you the tools to identify and discover the plan and purposes of God for your life. It says here, he has made unto us the, mis known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. Did you know it gives God pleasure for you to discover his will? It gives God pleasure for you to discover his plan for your life. He has written out that plan. We've talked about that in, First in Psalms 139. I apologize. In Psalm 139, he's talked about that he developed that plan for you before you were even born. It gives him pleasure for you to discover it. It's not hidden from you. But notice it says the mystery of his will. We have access to that mystery. If you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14... I referenced it early in the program, but 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in verse 1, it says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands it. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Now, when we take that with Ephesians 1 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. He made known to us the mystery of his will and deposited that knowledge. He abounded towards us in all wisdom 
by placing in our spirit. But how do we draw that spirit out to our natural understanding, to where we can access it, to where we can, you know, gain benefit from it? A lot of people, you know, have all these things. There's, you know, spiritual gifts tests. There's all kinds of natural means to help you identify them. But none of them will get you to your true purpose. And we notice here that it says in verse 2, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, how in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. One of those mysteries that you are speaking out when you are praying in your prayer language is the mystery of his will and plan for your life. You can on purpose draw out the mystery in the plan for your life. That mystery, that plan, is not hidden from you. But it was hidden before your birth. It was hidden in Christ Jesus. Now he gives you the ability through the Holy Spirit to purposely draw it up out of your spirit. The Holy Spirit is standing by to help you. Will you look to him? Will you allow him to teach you? We are out of time today. I thank you for joining me once again. And as we close out this program, I want to ask you to pray about coming alongside of us as a financial partner, helping us to continue to build this ministry, to continue to reach out to people with this message that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We talk about in some of these programs that you can live life to the fullest, walking by the faith of the son of God. He placed his faith within you. He placed the mystery of his will within your spirit and gave you the ability through the Holy Spirit to draw that out. This is good news that we want to share with the world. Pray about your part, whether to give a one-time offering or to give monthly, to join us as a monthly partner. We have a link on our webpage to sow into the ministry. Remember, as we close out today, Carolyn, I love you, and you can live life to the fullest, walking by the faith of the Son of God.